Hey guys, here at osmvdxreviews.com, we're watching our video review of the EXO EXO PC version 2.0. Now, instead of being really different in terms of the hardware, it's actually the exact same tablet PC inside, running with an Intel Atom 1.6 gigahertz processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of ROM, and uh, basically it's still built to run Windows 7 and Windows 8 as a Windows-based tablet, so this have an internal fan, which you can hear, that will kick in when the device gets hot. Um, but what's different now is that actually the software. This device is now running Mego OS, which is uh, the newer version is all launching with Amigo, which is actually the same operating system found in Nokia's N9 system, which we really loved, but this is the exclusive tablet version of the operating system by Linux. Unfortunately, Amigo is now a defunct operating system, so it's dying out, and this, as well as the Nokia N9, are really the only devices that are uh, widely known to really run Amigo uh, at all as an operating system, which is quite uh, interesting. The device still costs uh, $500 retail, but you can get it at a street price for around $300, which is a lot cheaper, uh, which is pretty nice. The device has a 11.2-inch capacitive multi-touch enabled edge-to-edge -to -edge glass with a 1.3 megapixel uh, front-facing camera on the front as well as an ambient light sensor on the edge. Because this tablet doesn't have a home button as a Windows-based device, you have to use the ambient light sensor as the back button. So when I'm at, whenever I'm in an application, uh, for example, like the web browser, I'm going to go into here and I'm searching some, some stuff uh, about some headphones. In order to exit out, I put my finger over the ambient light sensor and that dubs as a back key. This is kind of finicky. It works half the time and half the time it doesn't, which is a little bit annoying. Um, otherwise, the device doesn't even have a volume rocker. In order to select the volume and change the volume as well as Wi-Fi information, you slide from the top of the device to the downwards to access the notification drawer to change the volume like so. Um, otherwise, there aren't any live notifications like uh, Gmail or uh, mail information, you have to go into your settings and accordingly and select those. The device comes with a uh, HDMI port on the side, a, a proprietary charger port, two USB 2.0 ports, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and an SDHC card for expanding the memory of the device. The proprietary dock is on the on the bottom of the device, and on the back you will just find the power on and off switch. It's also made of a soft touch material which is easy to grip. Now the device is quite thin, but however as a Windows based tablet it is quite heavy, coming in at 2 pounds, so putting it into a uh, laptop bag will be easy easy, but carrying around for all day might be a little bit more of a challenge. Now as a traditional LCD screen, the device is pretty responsive and easy to use. Uh, colors are bright and vibrant, but unfortunately I will say that uh, view angles are quite atrocious. At extreme angles, things get really washed out and quite black and difficult to see, while at different angles they become really suddenly easy to see, so that's different. Um, there also is an accelerometer, so when you're rotating the screen it will uh, uh, change orientation accordingly, um, so for most applications that will work. Now Mego as an operating system, the only thing I can say right now is it's half-baked. Even though this is one of the more official devices, it's not my favorite operating system because it's kind of unstable. Um, I do like what I'm seeing, but uh, right now it's difficult to judge because, again, sometimes the home button doesn't even work, sometimes the volume doesn't work, sometimes the Wi-Fi doesn't work, and for, just for recording this review, we've actually gone through already uh, 10 different takes, which is kind of diff difficult and slightly tedious, and that speaks for itself. But still, who is Mego operating system designed for? It's definitely designed for first-time tablet users. It's not for advanced users, like uh, people who like Android or maybe Windows 8 um, as operating systems. It's kind of like WebOS, kind of like Black BlackBerry's Playbook operating system, where it's easy to multitask, easy to see your cards for different applications, but um, there's not a lot of customization going on. Likewise, there isn't even an app store on this tablet. Believe it or not, you can only uh, install new applications if you do that by yourself. If you know how to, uh, if you're comfortable with hacking and comfortable with using a lot of Linux products, you probably will be able to do that. The best way to describe it is of the operating system is it has different tiles for different applications, including one for web, music, video, uh, photos, and for my tablets. You can make these tablets uh, disappear or appear by going and selecting hide panel, but you can't add any new existing panels into the interface. Uh, as far as photos are concerned, you can see that the, the uh, screen does a pretty nice job of displaying the video, displaying the content. It's nice and large, and images come out bright and uh, very saturated, which is always nice. Unfortunately, even though the panel uh, is capable of being a multi-touch enabled touchscreen, as shown in the uh, and the uh, Windows 7 variant of the tablet, unfortunately, Amigo version 1.0 does not support multi-touch pinch to zoom. So whenever you're doing that, it doesn't really do anything. Um, but with that said, we hope that this will be a future software update which will fix this issue. Otherwise, this device is also dual bootable, so you can also install Windows 8 or Windows 7 on the EXO PC, and it will run multiple operating systems, which is quite nice. As far as heat is concerned, because it is a Windows device running Windows uh, running on an Intel Atom processor, it's pretty good. It does occasionally get a little bit warm, and so the fans do kick in, it gets a little bit noisy, but overall it's pretty quiet and silent for a Windows design device. Otherwise, as a video experience in Mego OS, it works pretty well as, uh, as well. It supported most uh, popular, um, pop popular files, including MP4, WMA, uh, 
so it's going to be pretty good for viewing video content. We tried out uh, HD content up to 720p and it worked without a hiccup. And the HDMI output is also working so you can put that to a big monitor to use, which is always nice. Um, you can see this is a 480p video that works pretty well. Streaming as well as going back through different parts of the video also worked without a hiccup. It plays very fast in terms of scrubbing, so it's also nice. There are stereo speakers built in this tablet, so it is very loud and very easy to hear. And uh, additional pair of 3.5mm headphone jacks will even make this device even better. So taking a look at some um, other applications, there's a music player. Again, selecting the music, you have to go down using the notification drawer, which can get a little bit tedious. We did wish there was a built-in uh, volume rocker on the side, but unfortunately it's not there. The biggest selling point of this device is definitely the web browser because it comes with Adobe Flash Player native support. So you can play uh, everything from YouTube to Flash content, um, other videos directly from the web browser, which is important because this tablet does not come with a YouTube application and there isn't an application, there isn't a app store to install those applications. So launching the web browser is quite fast, um, it takes a few seconds, it's going to take you there. And you can see that pages load into the full desktop view, which is always really nice and pleasurable to see. Uh, to zoom in and out, we basically double tap instead of again, uh, instead of uh, again pinch to zoom. You can also highlight text and copy and paste text, even though uh, again. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit finicky. You can definitely copy and uh, paste text by uh, selecting something and then uh, using these two little pointers to copy it. It definitely works pretty well. You can see that the uh, keyboard itself is also pretty nice and easy to use. It doesn't take advantage of the full space of the tablet for some reason. This leads us to believe that the uh, Mego operating system was originally designed for use on a 7-inch screen instead of this 11.2-inch screen. But unfortunately, there isn't a 7-inch variant of a Mego tablet on the market that we can really judge that on. But again, you use the accelerometer. You can see that the, the uh, keyboard does tend to take up only a little bit of the space. Although it is responsive and easy to use, it comes with a full set of symbols as well. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to type using two hands because it is so narrow, but it does work uh, pretty well if you like using thumb typing. So for example, if we go to YouTube, and we can go to youtube.com, you can see that uh, full flash content does load, and it loads pretty well, but you definitely have to wait a few seconds. It's not the fastest thing on the world, which is a little bit surprising in our book, because this device is using a full Windows Atom processor underneath the hood, so technically speaking, it should be very quick, especially since Mego is such a light operating system running on Linux, but for some reason, uh, not everything is as fast and as beautiful as we expect it to be. But there you go, it does have full flash support, and uh, videos do load pretty well. So, for example, if you wanted to view a uh, video of um, the actual Olympics, uh, someone figure skating right now, we can press on that. It's going to load in a few seconds. And you can see that it works pretty well. And there is a little bit of stuttering, but once it loads uh, using Wi-Fi connection, it's going to work pretty well. You can pause video, of course, and all works with a hiccup. So overall, as far as the web browsing experience is considered, we are pretty impressed with this tablet. And basically that's all the main applications. If you want to check email and stuff, you can add uh, additional applications. They, those aren't installed and shown from the direct home screen. You can press view all applications and they will display in a more traditionalized grid-like icon view. A thing to note here is that the accelerometer is a little bit finicky, just like the operating system, because uh, here in this view, for some reason, a page can't load in a horizontal view. It has to be in portrait style. So as long as you Take note of that, it's not going to rotate when you are changing the tablet, so you have to kind of swap back and forth between holding the tablet in different positions to utilize it. The camera works pretty well, again 1.2 megapixels, and does do pretty well even in low light conditions, which is always nice. There's a video player we talked about, contacts. The clock is pretty simple, just an alarm clock, uh, maybe a nightstand if you want to use that for. There's a calendar, a calculator, and a notepad application, music player that we talked about. There's a chatting application which includes Google Talk, which is uh, pretty nice. Uh, you can see that here and uh, hopefully it will load. It takes a few seconds to load, and you can see you have different uh, Google Talk and Jabber applications to select from, which works. Both work pretty well. And again, the microphone is built onto the very top, so you're just speaking into it very naturally. And finally, the Gmail, the mail application, you can select from different mail clients, including Gmail, and uh, all the different popular clients will work with this tablet. Uh, just note that there's there aren't any live notifications. So in order to check your email, you have to constantly go back to the email application in order for that to work. It's not going to pop up on a message on top of the screen saying you have a new message. You have to go back and do that for yourself. So overall, this is a pretty promising tablet. Again, it's really designed for first-time tablet users, which is a really intuitive user interface and a pretty decent web browser uh, experience combined. 
But with that in mind, it's definitely not the most intuitive. It's still a little bit more buggy than we would really consider it to be a great tablet at this moment. Uh, still, the price tag is a little bit steep for something that's so pre-production, but uh, we are excited. We definitely think that Miko is a promising UI. We're hoping to see uh, if the company can develop it further in the uh, in the future, and hopefully a uh, following and community will continue to push out new content for this operating system, just like they have for a Nokia N9. Um, but for now, we would definitely say there are better tablet options out there on the market, unless you have to have a 11.2-inch uh, tablet, and certainly the dual-boot option is pretty appealing because you can install Windows on top of Amigo. So thanks for watching here at OS at VTXReviews.com. This has been a video first look review at the uh, EXO PC version 2.0 here at OS and VTX. Thanks, and watch for more content here uh, in our website and also on our YouTube channel in the coming days. Thanks for watching.